Good morning. This is last day and we are very grateful for what God has done. I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his faithfulness. And I know you can share with me that the Lord has been good. The Lord has been faithful. Even being able to carry us through this week. And we are very grateful that this is the month of April. And as we come to the tail end of the month of April, we can only end this month with thanksgiving in our hearts. Brethren, are you conscious that the Lord has been gracious? The year 2024, that to me it's so amazing, it's learning so, so fast. If today we are on the eve hours, the eve hours of the month of April, brethren, and you know, you are closing down on the first quarter of the year. It's done, brethren. It's coming to a cross. And we thank God. We thank God that he has remained faithful. God is gracious. God is good. God is kind. God is merciful. God is loving. God is good. Even this morning, I don't know how you woke up. But I want to remind you, my brother and my sister, God is good. He is faithful. He is kind. His masses are made new every morning. He is not our business of throwing us away. God is loving. His love is unconditional. God is just. He is not like a man that he will, in one way or another he will treat us out of emotions and feelings. He is a God of justice. God is so gracious. He carries us with his grace. We get into places we did not deserve just by his grace. He does things that no one can do because he is gracious. He is gracious. Not only that, but one of the things that I'm learning of great, that God, God is full of love. That his love is beyond us, beyond our thoughts, beyond our comprehension. His love is not the human love that we know. No matter, we say that he is agape. He was even willing to lay down his life for us. That is how God loves us. By the way, when even the musicians sang and say that the Lord is like the elbow, God is able, God is able to make us safe just because of his love. And therefore this morning I come with the message of reminding us that even now God is in control. God loves us. God cares. God is concerned. And I can bring it even as we get into the next important thing. Hear this in the book of John chapter 14 and verses 1. John chapter 14 verses 1. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Do not be troubled. Even today, this one, do not allow your heart to be troubled. Do not allow your spirit to be darkened. Do not allow your soul to let off the grip. Do not give up, my brother and sister. Do not be troubled. Do not allow worry to take toll on your life and heart. Do not walk in fear. Kenya, Kenya, do not be troubled. Do not walk in fear. Do you know why? One thing that we are supposed to do, believe in God. These are the words of Jesus. Believe in God, whom I've just explained, and his attribute. Believe in that loving, caring God. Believe in that forgiving, that gracious, that favorable, that wonderful, loving God. And also Jesus says, and believe in me. And remember yesterday we said that one of the important key posts, election lessons was about belief and faith and jesus is saying here believe in god also believe in me and remember he was telling them though i'm going i'm going to prepare a place for you and in my father's house there are many mansions so fear not i have a plan for tomorrow he has a plan for the next month he has a plan of next year he has a plan for your son and daughters in the coming dispensation of their lives he has a plan for your business. He has a plan for your career. He has a plan for your health and your family, even your marriage. Fear not. Do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also on Jesus Christ who died and is selected. And therefore power, authority belongs to him. His name is above every other name. At his name, every knee shall bow 
and every time confess that he is the Lord. That's the lesson. The key lesson was to the selection. Number one. And the, 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 the fourth one I want to bring to you is about learning, love and service. Love and service. Now, allow me to say this. Jesus demonstrated service and love all through his ministry. In fact, the ministry of Jesus was about love. It was grounded, founded on love. No wonder it's true that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. In fact, the message of the kingdom and of the gospel is all about love. However, Jesus also says, if you love, you must demonstrate love. Love is not only spoken. Love is demonstrated. How do you demonstrate love? God demonstrated love by giving his son, who he gave as a sacrifice. When we want to demonstrate the love of Christ, we must be willing to give ourselves to the service of the kingdom, to the cause of the kingdom, and more so, even to lay it down. That's why Jesus said, if you follow me, carry your cross. I've ever heard people say that carry the cross of Jesus. Jesus did not say that you carry his cross. He is his courage. By the way, I must be willing to carry my own cross. I must be willing to carry a place of shame, a place of pain, a place of betrayal, a place of any, any other thing, you name it. I must be willing to carry the cross. Because I must be willing to be willing to lay down my life. And that is what we call true service. And now Jesus, even when he is at the table with the disciples on the last supper, he also chooses to wash his disciples' feet. And he griddles himself with a towel. And then he took a jug and a basin, put water, was able to clean the feet. And you remember it was not easy. Peter refused because he knew that was the work of a servant. And he said, whoever would want to become, whoever would want in the kingdom to become fast or even great, he must be willing to serve others. Now Jesus reselects. Do you know what he does? He goes where the disciples learn. You can imagine after they, uh, they were carried away by fear, after Peter denied Jesus, and all these guys went, after that even they did the words, they said, let's go back, let's go back where this gentleman caught us from. And they went back to the sea, and they were there the whole night, struggling. Remember, without God, you cannot do anything. That's why we learned the lesson of the Spirit, that he said he believed the Spirit, so because without the strength and the presence of God, it is not possible for us to do any good thing. Then after that, when they have struggled and they have come, at the banks, remember what happens. He looked at them and he asked them, Children, have you had something to eat? For me, I've always called that, uh, I have always called that, uh, I have always called that, uh, is like, a, like a, what we, we call, is like a, a mockery. It's like a mockery of some kind. He's telling them, Oh, guys, Bwana, hey, si mume choka, si mume, mume sumbuka, usikumzima, si mume ngangana, alafu anauliza, na muna kitu ya kukula. And the guys when I had nothing, even after struggling, by the way, that is the worst thing when you try to hustle without God. When you try to work and you have already not, did not allow God's spirit and presence to go with you, you really hustle. You work hard, but you are finding nothing that you can celebrate about. And now, allow me to say this. When it gets to that area, it's like it becomes very different. He told them, have you gotten something? And they were willing and said, no, we have not found anything. Can you even hear these words as I lead them? John chapter 21 and verses 5. This was Jesus. He called out them and said, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Then Jesus said, throw your net on the light side of the boat and you will find some. Then they did, and they were unable to howl the net because of the large numbers of the fish. Now, you can't believe it.
that Jesus was willing even to go where they are. Can I say this? When they denied him and left and went back, he was willing by love. And that is where we miss a point. That we should always remember that one of the emphasis of Jesus after this election is that the disciples must never give up on love. We must love. We must love even our own enemies. We have no option. We must even love the people who betrayed us. We must love the people who abandoned our cause. Even if they are your brothers and your sisters, and by the way, you had a very good cause as a family, and a particular time, they just left. And by the way, they said even very bad things. And all of a sudden, you feel so discouraged. And they say, Kwani, it's not, it was not even my personal thing. No, you are supposed, even on those disappointments, to go seeking and looking for your brothers. By the way, the issues of the kingdom are different from the issues of the world. The formula of the kingdom, it's opposite to the formula of the world. If you want to know it, hear what Jesus said, that when you're slapped in this one chin, you give the other one. When someone picks up your coat, you give them even the inner. You know, it does not mean that at least when somebody slaps to Mwambi, hata igonga, ah-ah, utapigwa, na utafasuriwa mpaka the jaw. It means that you are not willing to fight and even to give back or to fight back. In other words, you don't answer ill with ill. You don't pay evil with evil. You are able to, uh, to pay evil with good. Love is about doing what is right even in the long circumstances and situations. Love is about accepting the attitude of Christ that even on the cross, he said, forgive them. They, may, they know not what they are doing. And at this particular time, he also makes a meal for them. You remember he even they realized that he had already made calls and he made peace for them. So when they are coming and they are tired, he gave them something to eat. That is the power of service. That he was willing to serve them even after this election. You can imagine. Even after this election, Jesus is stooping low to serve his disciples. Even serving them that denied him and even abandoned his cause. After they had eaten his bread for three and a half years. Now brethren, my parting shot. It is important to accept by God's grace that we must, by the calling of Christ, understand the key emphasis of service and love. God has called us to love. Love even when it is not rational to love. Serve even when it is not rational or human thoughts to serve. And not only serving what we say we serve God, serving our people, serving our brothers and sisters, serving men and women around your career, serving people that do not deserve your service. Because Jesus, Jesus taught us that he was able to restore his own by love and by service. May the Lord give you the grace of restoration. May the Lord give you the grace to restore even the broken relations and even all those areas of life that are wanting. And may you find the grace to restore them with love and with service. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.